Hello people, and in particular Mike from Twitter. Um, Mike, you asked me about this um, Euro NZD um, trade and where I would have uh, bailed, as it were, uh, closed the trade if it had gone against me. And um, we're on the 15 minute chart here. And the reason I've uh, got on this 15 is I just wanted to explain the 15 minute three candle reversal there, um, which was here. Um, that's the penultimate low, that's the ultimate low, that's the reversal. Um, the other reason I wanted to get into this trade uh, while we're on this chart and it's easy to see is you can see the obvious levels there. The um, R1, a test of, uh, the fact that we're in a massive uptrend on this 15 minute chart, uh, everything screaming long, uh, the round number there. The only reason I got out early and I got out early manually is because it didn't uh, hit the target before uh, it hit what I wanted it to hit, which was the um, uh, the R1, which would have given me an extra four or five pips. But um, the, you know, it just uh, it was annoyingly slow, and I like to be out of my trades. Generally, I'm out of my trades within about one bar or two. So it was just that's the grinding time of day pre Frankfurt. Frankfurt, they can always reverse it. The DAX will cause all sorts of problems to uh, the euro. So um, I, you know, uh, prudence or purse of, or, or you know, saving your capital, should I say, is all important. So don't gamble. Just get out and then take another trade when it presents itself. Anyway, back to the stop. Where you want to be putting your stop. And I didn't make this clear in the, in the um, response on Twitter purely because I hate writing when I can just put together a video and talk about stuff live. Um, you want to be looking for an area of resistance. Um, for that, uh, for that reason, what I've done is I've drawn this on here. So you know, in the down move, that resistance is what created the lowest low. So we can put it on the 15 minute. For ease, we've used the 15 minute for the three candle reversal. There's the 15 minute high, an ultimate high, ultimate uh, high low, and uh, so a stop anywhere below there is should be absolutely um, solid as a rock. So um, the other reason, the other thing I wanted to say about this, it was difficult to make this um, video, and this is about a second or third take, because it is a continuation trade, as I said, based on uh, targets that we know historically price will go to test. So um, the difference with a continuation trade and a reversal trade, this is a reversal trade, three candle reversal, clear trend up. There you can see the trend is reversed. Much, much easier to uh, identify your, uh, your stop loss areas in those. So it was a bit of a tricky question to answer, but um, I wanted to get an answer out there for you. So now we'll go back to the five minute and we can look at it. And I had uh, given you sort of a, um, you asked me where would I have bailed on, on this? And I actually said, uh, I drew a line there. So you can see it's not so far from that 15 minute on the high of that was the level because that is the last resistance below the price. So to explain my thought processes with this, it's important to understand what I believe is going on on these charts. And what I believe is absolute manipulation. It's the big banks and it's the algorithms. When I say big banks, the institutions, the Bank of England, Bank of Japan, the ECB and uh, the US Federal Bank and a couple of other Swiss bank. All they do is manipulate price and they're fighting against each other and it is those that are battling it out with their billions or whatever and it is nothing to do with retail traders. Forget retail traders, we are a spot on the backside of an elephant. So, you know, um, this is all about manipulation. So I believe, and it suits me to believe that, that we are just getting at the best possible time, which is why I use trend analysis and accumulation, distribution, mis manipulation, call it what you like. Um, so when we are entering, we always enter on swing five. 
that was your 15 minute uh, reversal level there that one there that's the confirmation the break and close that's the pullback and then I entered so if we work this backwards we know that is swing four we know that is uh, swing three swing two swing one because it's difficult to work this out as a trend because it's all over here we're not in a reversal we're in a continuation as I've described so you always want to be in somewhere in the region of the low of swing two and um, the arbitrary 14 pip stop level I put there was wrong really what I want what I want to explain to you is swing two was uh, where I always just used to say arbitrarily put your stop below swing two you'll be safe in reality if you want to tighten your stop all you need to do is find the last resistance in that um, low, a higher low which is that green candle there and stick your stop the spread plus one pip behind there so let's say three and a half pips lower than that so and I hope you can see I'll put a level on there that's the level put your stop a couple of pips below there and you if you've got your you know your uh, all your analysis right your target your swings your reversals three candle reversals and so on then that is the place you want to put your stop because it's a resistance level price comes back to test old resistance as new support so once it's tested it there it's got no reason to come back any further you can you know this is why you want to stick to if you can uh, currency pairs that are less spiky you, you all know the spiky ones I mean you know can't really find one think of one off the top of my head not so spiky talking about the wicks you know all these uncertain um, difficult to find. yeah let here loads of this is scary wicks all over the place here so that's spiky euro NZD is not spiky so put your stop behind that um, lost our spot now behind that last uh, you can see what I've done the lowest high the lowest low rather the high of that is your last resistance that forced price down if we could look inside well we can look inside that we can look at the one minute but we will you know we'll see another trend I don't want to just uh, go too much into detail but I hope you get the point now so that let's say a couple of pips below that level there to there is 25 pips or give or take which is far better than arbitrary 25% of the 5 day ADR which is at 36 pips or far better than the low the low you'd be very very unlucky to have that hit so the bail point is should have been really that one there which is only probably about 10 pips in fact from the entry based on the 15 well add, add yeah add a couple of pips so you know that's why I love this method because that you should be out of the trades pretty quickly you should um, always be in the right direction with the institutions because this is their manipulation phase swing four some call it accumulation as I've said so hopefully that answers your question Mike um, any other questions please do ask um, I need to talk about um, swing trend uh, stops and everything so uh, and update the video so I will do that at some stage but um, that's your that's hopefully a decent answer to your question it's important to remember keep that in mind that this method you are entering when the price is exhausted in the opposite direction so you should be out quick you will notice that most of my trades have so little drawdown probably about 18 pips is the most drawdown um, I've suffered but it depends if you're trading gold double half your uh, your trade size as it were and double your pip size so you know 40 50 60 pip um, stops need to be you know arbitrary stops need to be put on gold gold is spiky as well so gold may well I don't trade it that often 
and I don't uh, I haven't studied whether it uh, respects this rule so much but gold uh, I wouldn't be surprised if they do spike it through these levels so be ultra careful with something like gold but um, there you go I'm going off topic again so apologize for that hope that covers what you asked uh, Mike and have a good day's trading <laughs>